Good afternoon to everyone. I bring greetings from our mother church, uh, Faith Fundamental Baptist Church, Antipolo City. And it is my privilege to be here and to bring to you the Word of God. It's a joy to be here. Uh, I just want to show you uh, my family picture so that you can continually pray for us. Uh, I have four kids, uh, but only one wife. I have only one wife. <laughs> only one wife. Uh, we have four kids. Actually, we are um, missionaries sent by our mother church to Koron, Palawan, one of the smallest islands in Palawan. And uh, we just want to thank the Lord. 14 years ago, the, our mother church sent us to Palawan and start a ministry there. And uh, the Lord is, is continually blessing the ministry in Koron. So I want to show it to you. That's our school also there. Next picture. That's our 14th anniversary. We are inviting you to our 15th anniversary coming May 2018. So, and I uh, just want to sh show you some of our leaders, pastors, and coaches who are serving the Lord in the island. So, I'm from the island. Uh, so, from time to time, I, I, we speak Tagalog there. Tagalog. May I know who's not speaking Tagalog here? Tagalog, yeah, yeah. So, you speak Tagalog, ma'am. So can you be my interpreter there? From time to time, I'll speak Tag Tagalog. So if I speak Tagalog, just uh, ask, ask your neighbor there and ask what I'm telling the other people. But it's a joy and privilege for me to be here and to bring the Word of God. And uh, we'll continue to pray for you. I'm encouraged uh, in how the Lord is working in, uh, in this church. And it is my prayer that when I come back, Lord willing, 10 years from now or five years or, or if, if God will come next year or this year, see you in heaven. Amen? Amen. 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 But uh, it is my prayer that we can bring more, more souls to the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ, especially uh, those people who are not Filipinos. Amen? Amen. Uh, I, I'm... I'm Praying that you will start praying for a non-Filipino friend, that you will really pray for him, and the Lord will be merciful, show his power, and that he will know Jesus Christ. Because we want to see that day that every knee, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? Amen. And uh, are you excited to the coming of the Lord? Amen. Uh -uh. Amen. Are you excited? Amen. Yeah, okay. Thank you very much. Let's open our Bibles in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 7, verses 54 to 84. Acts chapter 7. This is uh, about the death of Stephen, the first Christian martyr in the Bible. And I'm requesting everyone to please stand in reverence to God's word. Acts chapter 7, verses 54 to chapter 8, verse 4. Let me read this for you. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the quick, and they began gnashing their teeth at Stephen. But being full of the Holy Spirit, he gazed intently into heaven, and he saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open, open up, and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice and covered their ears and rushed at him with one impulse. When they had driven him out of the city, they began stoning him. And the witnesses laid aside their robes at the feet of the young man named Saul. They went on stoning Stephen as he called the Lord and said, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then falling on their knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. Having said this, he fell asleep. Saul was in hearty agreement with putting him to death. And on that day, a great persecution began against the church in Jerusalem. And they were all scattered throughout the region of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Some devout men buried Stephen and made loud lamentation over him. 
But Saul began ravaging the church, entering house after house and dragging off men and women. He would put them in prison. Therefore, those who had been scattered went about preaching the word. Philip went down to the city of Samaria and began proclaiming Christ to them. The Lord add blessing to the reading of his word. Let's pray. Our gracious God and heavenly Father, we acknowledge that you are our holy God. And you require holiness to everyone that will open your holy word. Lord, I'm praying this afternoon that if there are sins in our hearts, Lord, I'm praying that you will cleanse us, Lord. Make us worthy to study and open your holy word this afternoon. Lord, without you, we are nothing. Be merciful to us, O oh God. Work in our means. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Who among you have remembered uh, a turntable. Do you know a turntable? The, the, we, we call that plug. Before the cassette tape, there's a the turntable. Sino pong, sino pong meron nun? Yeah, Nakakaalam nun. Yeah, ibig sabihin po matanda na kayo. <laughs> Yun lang yan. Uh, uh, ibig sabihin, <laughs> sabay nilaglag, you know? Uh, when I was still small, we used to, to listen to a turntable that's 45, right? And we are listening to testimonies of missionaries from other places. One of the testimonies there is about uh, the life of missionaries who visited Auka. The Aukas, the, they, they eat people. You know? And uh, so this young man um, said to themselves, Lord, what, what we want us to do. And then the Lord just spoke to them and just led them to go to the Aukas. And we are listening, I, I can clearly remember it was a night time, and we are listening to the voices of the missionaries, how they prepared and how, how the Lord called them. So they obeyed the Lord and they went straight to the Alcans. Uh, to make the long story short, those people ate them. Kinain po sila. Alcan people ate them. And then after years, the wife of one of the missionaries, uh, came back to that place. And there's a picture of a man carrying a white boy. And the title at the feet says, How can I love the man who killed my father? How can I love the man who killed my father? You know, every time we listen, we listen to testimonies like that, we say, Wow, it's great. Right? You know, when we, when we hear great testimonies of obedience to the Lord, giving their life to the Lord, we say, wow, that's great, right? The question is, can that happen to our time right now? Can we still see people who are willing to suffer and die for Jesus' sake? Is that possible in our time? Parang masamina, man. Parang may tinutulak eh. Can we, can we see that in our time? Yes. Is that possible? Yes. You know, it is my prayer, it is my prayer this afternoon that after the message, we will be reminded of how great our God is. We will see how He loves us so much. He gave His only begotten Son. I believe with all of my heart, that Jesus designed his church to be unstoppable. Say to your neighbor, we are unstoppable. We are unstoppable. The church is unstoppable, amen? amen? And you are a member of the church, yes? You are a body of the church. We, we, have, uh, we, have learned, we have learned in our revive that we are part of the body of Christ, amen? amen. And uh, the church is the bride of Christ, amen? So we said uh, there in the revive, if you cannot say something good about the body or the bride of Christ, you shut up, right? So it, it make a difference there. So we are the body of Christ. We are members of Christ's body. Amen? Amen. So the question is, uh, what's the membership fee? How's the membership fee? Um, 
Papaano ka ba naging member ng church? Okay? 100,000? 1 million? Entry fee? Membership fee? How much is the membership fee in this church? Free. 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 Right. It's free. Amen? Amen? Yes, it's free. But let me remind you, you have, you have been a member of this church. Yes, the membership is free. But let me remind you that it costs the life of the only Son of God, Jesus of the cross, for you to be a member of this church. So it costs a lot. In your part, this is free. Your membership is free in the body of Christ, but it costs the only Son of God, Jesus Christ, in the cross for you to be a member of His body. So it, it costs a lot. Can you say to your neighbor, it costs a lot. So I'm praying to the Lord that you will look at your membership in the body of Christ as precious. Say to the to your neighbor, precious. precious. You are precious. <laughs> parang iba, parang ano, parang yung go, precious. <laughs> no, no, no. You are precious. Say to your neighbor, you are precious. Amen? You are part of the body of Christ. You know, um, to the Filipinos, I know you have heard what happened to Marawi and what's happening to Marawi, right? And uh, um, some people there, uh, the Mauti uh, group, they'll ask uh, people there if they cannot recite the prayer, they'll shoot the person. Huh? And I'm praying to the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm praying to the Lord uh, last night, and I'm, I'm, I'm asking the Lord, Lord, I'm praying that you will show a glimpse of your glory to your people. How great, how awesome you are. Brothers and sisters, um, this afternoon, I want to believe with all of my heart that we will be able to see followers of Jesus who will stand for him in these coming days in suffering and in death. And it is my prayer that God will call people from this congregation to show God's glory even in death. Amen? Amen. You know, there is one truth. God desires for the church to have a spirit-filled passion that moves our city and all the nations for Christ. You know, I have said to our revive, we have a mission to accomplish. God saved you with a mission. Amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor you have a mission. You have a mission. Your mission here in Dubai is not just to get money, not to have a living, not just to have things of this world, but you have a God-given mission. And your mission is Jesus' mission. That is to seek and to save that which was lost. That is your mission, and that is my mission in life. God wants us to share His love to other people so that one day every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? Amen. We want, the, the Lord wants every people to be worshipers of the true God. So the first truth that we can see, God desires the church to have a spirit-filled passion that will move our city and the nation for Christ. We have seen our text this morning and this afternoon, and we, I have four questions. Four questions if we want our church to move forward for the glory of God. Do you want this church to move forward? Amen? Amen. 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 We want this church to move forward for the glory of God. Four questions. Question number one that I think we need to ask ourselves as a church, will we choose mission over maintenance in the church? Will we choose mission or maintenance in the church? Actually, this, this question springs from the context of our passage, the whole passage that we have read. If you look at the book of Acts, you go to Acts chapter 1. 
You go to book to Acts chapter 1 and it says there it, it, it says there you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses and Judea Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth if you will look at Acts chapter 1 verse 8 you can see a clear plan from the Holy Spirit from the Lord that's his plan for the church to be witnesses to be God's witnesses to where Jerusalem Judea Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the world but you know if you will read Acts chapter 1 to Acts chapter 6 to 7 the Christians disobeyed the plan of God they stayed in Jerusalem okay you, you look back at Acts chapter 1 the plan of God is that just stay here first and then in chapter 2 God will give the Holy Spirit and when the Holy Spirit comes you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and into the ends of the earth. But you look at chapter 6 and chapter 7, they have not yet begun to even fulfill what was laid in Acts chapter 1. So the early believers were disobedient. Okay? So we can see there. And then here's Stephen. Stephen is, has a Greek background. No? Greek background po siya. He is not a, a full Jew, full-blooded Jew. And then here's Stephen challenging the church, the Jewish believers, to move on, to obey the Lord, not to stay in their traditions. So we can see here at this point, Acts chapter, Acts chapter 8, chapter 7, 6, 7, and 8, we can see there how... Stephen challenged the people of God to obey the Lord. Okay? Because they are not obeying the Lord. They are busy with so many, many things inside the church and they don't go out in sharing what God has done through the Lord Jesus Christ. Because they stayed in Jerusalem. So, I, so you'll say this after them, Pastor, so what? Is it possible for us that we are too busy with the church activities that we forget the real mission of the church and that is to make disciples of all nations? Is it possible that we as a church are too busy with all the programs in the church and left the real mission of God to us that is to make disciples? Let me ask you, when was the last time you intentionally discipled a person? Two years ago? Five years ago? Ten years ago? Probably 20 years ago? What's the command? What's the great commission? The great commission for us at the church is that we must Go and make disciples of all nations. That is a command. Can you say to your neighbor, it is a command. <laughs> and not doing the command, not fulfilling the command, is a sin against God. You know, according to the survey, only 95, all the, almost 5% are doing intentional discipleship. We, we will ask, do we have a program in the church? Oh, yeah, we have a lot of program inside the church. But brothers and sisters, let me remind you that it is possible that we can be busy with the church activities and even busy with your life and not obey the Lord. And if you will not obey the Lord, you are disobedient. You are disobedient. So now the question is, will you choose mission over maintenance? Are you just maintaining your life today? As a church, are we just maintaining or we are really that on fire to do the mission of God? 
that we are intentional in our making disciples of all nations. Or we can just come here, go back to your place, your work, and then come here again. Not being intentional in making disciples. Okay? Maintenance. Sa Tagalog, di ba, pagka tinatapas, sabi mo, Brad, ang pogi mo naman, hindi, nag-maintain lang. Nag-maintain lang, di ba? Maganda yun, di ba? Maganda sa Tagalog, di ba? Pero sa church, hindi po siya maganda. Okay? So, I'm praying to the Lord, probably five questions. Five questions we have to ask if we want to be um, on fire in doing our mission. Number one, how will I pray? How will I pray? How should prayer life? There is a good thing. We can be part of the mission in on our knees. Amen. So, how should prayer life? Is your do you enjoy? Let me ask you: Do you enjoy your communication, your prayer to the Lord? Do you enjoy? Do you enjoy reading the Word of God? Do you enjoy the praying, just just talking to the Lord? Do you enjoy that? If you if you are not enjoying your prayer life. I believe there's something wrong with your relationship with the Lord. Okay? So, number two. Number two, how will I study? How will I study? Number one, you study the Word of God. You read the Word of God. You know? Um, uh, intentionally read the Word of God. But not only the Word of God, but your work. Brothers and sisters, uh, as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, you study the Word here, but you also study your, your work. Why? Because we want you to be excellent in your job. Amen? Why? So that they will raise, raise your, your pay. Uh, it's good, but not ultimately. Ultimately, we want you to be excellent in your work. Why? So that people will see your good works. And they will glorify your Father who is in heaven. You know, if a lot of people are not working that, that much, you know, they are not giving their best, you know, they are they're lazy, don't be lazy. Give your best. You work not, not for your bosses, you work for our boss there, right? So you give your best shot to your work so that they will see the difference. Amen? Minsan yung iba, mas mabait pa yung ano eh. Unbeliever eh. Diba? So many times when we, we look at life, you know, they perform better than us. As followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, we want you to study, to study the Word and study your work. Be excellent in your work so that they will see your good works and they will glorify our Father who is in heaven. Number three, how will I give? How will I give? You know, I always tell our people that when you want to invest your money, your life, invest it to the church. Amen? You know, sometimes as, as individuals, we support so many, so many uh, parachurches. But this is what I believe. The Lord built His church. The only, the only institution that God built is his church. Amen? Amen? So if you want to invest your life and your money, invest it here. Amen? Amen. Just believe, believe your leaders that they know how to spend your money for the mission of the Lord. Amen? So how will I give? Number four, how will I go? Lord, where do you want me to, to go? I believe with all of my, my heart for those Filipinos here, this afternoon. I believe God brought you here. Amen? Tell that to your neighbor. God brought you here. Amen? But God brought you here for His mission. God brought you here for His mission. So I say to you, be faithful to the Lord. Be faithful. And number five, how will I mobilize other people? How will I mobilize my brother, my sister to the Lord to do the mission? You know? It's not easy to do discipleship, right? Right? If it is easy, probably 100% will do discipleship. But I believe it's hard. 
Actually, it's impossible. It's only through the power of the Lord that we can do discipleship. Amen? It is only through His power and through His might that we can do personal discipleship. What do we mean by disciple, discipling? You, you share, you go, you evangelize, you baptize, you teach them to obey whatsoever God has commanded you. It is not a lesson to lesson thing. It is a life to life thing. Amen? Amen? They will mimic you. So if you are late in the church, your disciple will be absent. Okay? If you are, if you are lazy Christian, you will produce lazy Christians. If you are on fire to the Lord, you will produce on fire people to the Lord. Amen? Amen. What kind of people will you produce in this church? Look at your neighbor. Look at your neighbor. What kind? You ask what kind of church member will you produce? Right? Pasaway, no? Diba? Mga bullying Christian ba yung ipoproduce natin? Diba? Will we produce bully Christians? If you are bully, then we will produce bully Christians. You know? You know, brothers and sisters, if we are on fire with the Lord, and we are at war, we believe that we are at war, right? Spiritually? You know, a lot of times, there are a lot of problems inside the church. You know, even sometimes you, you see some of the, you know, kilay life, you know, ay, yung kilay niyo, oh, iba siya, parang mababa siya. <laughs> Dapat yung mga ganon, di ba, ay, iba yung kilay niyo, oh, parang, ay, di ba, di ba, ang dami, di ba, minsan yung, yung muka, yung kilay, you know, you know why? We are too occupied with ourselves. But you know, if we will be on fire with the Lord, on mission with the Lord. If we are at war, if we are at war in this world, doing our mission from the Lord, hindi hindi mo na may may kita yung kilay ng katabi mo, ha? So, brothers and sisters, we can we can choose actually. Are we a warship or a luxury liner? There, there's a, a, a clip like that, right? Yeah, have you seen that? The church is just like a, a warship or a luxury liner. So, is our church here a warship or a luxury liner? Lux what do you want? What do you want? Do you want a luxury liner or warship? Warship, right? Warship. Yeah, when, when, when you come to a luxury liner, uh, someone will come to you and say, what do you want, sir? What do you want, man? Juice, coffee, rare, right? But, but when, if it is a, a worship, we say, come on, be on time, 2.30. Everyone must come here, 2.30. Amen? Amen? Amen. So when you come at 2.30, what will happen to you? Push up, right? 2.30. You must be earlier, right? Amen? Amen. So that's what we do in, in Antipolo right now. We say, come on, we'll meet, especially men, young men, young, 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 young men say, we'll meet at 7 o'clock. You come at 7 o'clock. Well, do you experience C80 right here? C80, what's C80, right? Uh, training, uh, ROTC, right? All right? When you are late, you know, push up, down, down. We do that in Antipolo right now. Because I asked them already, do you want a warship or a luxury liner? They said, I want, Pastor, we want a warship for Jesus. I said, yes, amen. Okay, you want that? Come on. Let's do it. We will meet at 7 o'clock. They come at 7.15. Come on, man, come on. Run, run, and give me 20 push-ups. Come on. Give me 20. One, two. They want a, they want a, a warship, right? But if you will look at our Christian life, actually, we are a warship, right? But we are too busy with our lives. And we are running our church like luxury liners. Oh, I don't want to, I, I don't want the lightings, you know. Ah. 
It's hot in here. Come on. Will you do that if this is a warship? No. Subukan mo magreklamo sa ano mo. Sa commander mo. And, and sometimes you say, Pastor, they're shooting here. They're shooting me. You know? You know, there's bomb here. Oh, we are at war. Right? Alam niyo, para tayo minsan, ano, para tayong, ano, Pastor, bakit may mga pagsubok sa buhay? Bakit may mga pumuputok dyan? At war na tayo eh. Parang pinadala ka sa gera, tapos nagre-reklamo ka, may pumuputok. Gera yung pinuntahan mo. Amen? Amen. Tell your neighbor, we are at war. Okay? So, if there are hard times in our lives, it's okay. It's natural. Amen? 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 We are at war. You are in the mission. We are at war. Uh, so, the question is, mission or maintenance? Mission or maintenance? Mission. That's, that's not uh, what armies do, right? Yeah. Mission or maintenance? Mission. That's better, right? Okay. Okay, my own? Okay. Yes, sir. Dapat, di ba? Okay, my own? Yes, sir. Yon, parang iba yung... Yes, sir. <laughs> Lousy. <laughs> Weak. Di ba? Okay. Mission or maintenance, we are praying that our church will be a mission-minded church. Mission, on mission for the Lord. I'm not asking you to, to pack your things and go to Cambodia and go to Africa. You're already here on mission, right? Amen? Amen. We are on mission. Number two, is our worship driven by a God-centered passion or a man-centered production? Is our worship driven by God-centered passion or man-centered production? The people here, in the time in our text, we'll go back to our text. Stephen is questioned by those people who are serving in the temple, right? They say, actually, ano ba yung kaso ni Stephen? Ano ba yung kaso niya? Chapter 6, verse 12. So they stirred up the people and the elders and the teachers of the law. They seized Stephen and brought him before the Sanhedrin. Verse 13. Look at verse 13. They produced false witnesses who testified. This fellow never stopped speaking against his holy place and against the law. Okay? For we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the custom Moses handed down to us. Okay? So, this is their complaint. Stephen is not, do, is not doing worship in the right place. Not in the right place. Not on their system. Okay? That's the question. Not, not, on, uh, not on our place. Not on our terms. Not for our glory. So, they are questioning Stephen. You look at the life of Stephen there. I have only a few minutes, so we'll not discuss it. Okay? We will not discuss it. We worship. They, they ask Stephen. You know why? Because Stephen is worshiping in the wrong place, in the wrong terms, not for their glory. So they question Stephen and they want to kill Stephen. Okay? Don't miss this. They have created idols to put them up, bow down, and worship them. They have created gods to be who they wanted them to be and began to worship them. Okay? So that's the people in the time of Stephen. So they want Stephen to worship where they worship. The system, they want Stephen to follow their system. And Stephen must worship their god, their idol. Actually, they want Stephen to worship them. Not on, the wrong, not on the right place, not on the right terms, not for their glory. Brothers and sisters, what can we see here? We see here in the life of Stephen, when, when people were stoning him, we can see that worship happens when we see 
the glory of God. Ha worship happens when we see the glory of Christ. That is true worship. So when Stephen were, people were stoning Stephen, right? At that time, binabato nila si Stephen. And then, habang binabato si Stephen, habang binabato nila si Stephen, the, Stephen saw the glory of God. Wow. And Stephen has a face like an angel. Can you imagine? Can you imagine? You are being stoned. If given a chance, you're stoning me here, you know, what will be my face? Will I be happy? Siguro, no, I'm, I'm grinching in pain, right? But if you look at the life of Stephen, people were stoning him. But in spite of that, he has a face like an angel. And then, he saw the glory of God. Jesus standing on the right hand of God. You know, if you look at the Old Testament, the, the Bible always um, pictures Jesus seated on the right hand of God. Right? But here, if you will see, we can see here Jesus standing on the right hand of God. Why do you think Jesus is standing on the right hand of God. What do you think? I do not know the exact reason, but I think it's a support welcome, a support to, to what Stephen is doing. You know? you know, we, have, we have that saying that, Gusto ko mapangiti yung Panginoon. Right? I want that the Lord will smile in what I'm doing right now. You know? I want to do this. I want to serve the Lord because I want the Lord to smile. Right? But can you imagine here, Jesus is not sitting on the throne, right hand of God. He is standing. Wow. What a prayer that we can pray. Lord, I'm praying that I can let you stand. I can see you stand because of approval of what I'm doing. Grabe, ano? Grabe, grabe si Stephen, ano? Naka, nakatayo siya, nakatayo yung Panginoon sa kanya. Yun din ba yung desire mo? Is that your desire this afternoon? That Lord, I'm praying that I will live a life that I'll see you standing on the right hand of God because of your approval, thumb of approval for what I'm doing. Okay? We can see there. Okay? So, true worship sees the glory of God in Christ. But it doesn't stop there. True worship proclaims the goodness of God. Wow. We can see here, you know, I believe it's number one, Jesus standing on the right hand of God because he wants to encourage Stephen. He wants to encourage Stephen. And he is standing, Jesus is standing as a judge on the people who have engrossed themselves in worship and completely missed out the person of Christ. So that's what I believe. To worship continues to proclaim the goodness of Christ. Continues proclaim the goodness of Christ. There's a, a missionary named John Bunyan. Um, what the Pro Pilgrim's Progress. He said to his testimony, he was in prison 12 years. Um, John Bunyan, because of um, sharing the gospel, sharing the love of Jesus to other people. So, um, he was in prison for 12 years. You know, John Bunyan said, John Bunyan said, um, every time his family will visit him, he has a, actually he has a, a daughter who is blind. This is what he said. Um, it was like pulling of my flesh and bones every time. His family would visit him. Looking at his daughter, it's always like pulling my, the, my flesh from my bone. I wanted to be with my family, but proclaiming Christ was more important to me. 
probably to be imprisoned for your family. You can take that. How about being imprisoned for Christ's sake? You know, someone said to me, Pastor, I really need training to, to go to mission, to share my faith. No. I said, if you have experienced the love of Jesus, you are a witness, right? You will just share what you have experienced. Right? If, if you are with a basketball fanatic, you will know that in, a, in an hour that you talk together, right? If you are with uh, art people, musical people, you will know that they are into music, just an hour of talking, right? When people look at your life, will they recognize that you are truly in love with Jesus? You know, sometimes when people talk to me and said, you know, Pastor, I'm already 10 years in my work and they do not know that I'm a Christian. Come on. Shame on you. Because if you are really in love with Jesus, it will come out to your mouth. You will share it. Have you seen a, an in love person? Right? You have been in love, right? Who is in love here? Parang wala, di ba? Di ba ka? When you're in love, you text from time to time, you call from time to time. Yung iba sa Pilipinas, kahit malayo, kahit malaking bayad. Dati malaking bayad, buti na lang ngayon, meron ng Skype, no? Pero dati kahit gaano kalayo, you, know, you call because you're in love. It's flowing from the heart. When you are really in love with the Lord, it will flow from your heart. If I will ask the people around you, have they recognized that you are in love with Jesus? That you are in love with Jesus? So the question is, is our worship generates a true kind of worship? Is it God-centered passion or man-centered production? Number three. Number three. three. Third question. Will we embrace suffering as the primary means for the spread of the gospel on earth? Wow. This is a hard question, right? Um, but you look at how Luke develops his writing. You can see there that God save this world through a suffering servant, Jesus. Right? Right? Yes. And you look at the lives of his disciples, followers. They also suffered. Who among here, when someone shared to you the gospel, said, you know, you really need Jesus. And if you will take Jesus, you take Jesus and suffering. Sino pong sinabihan ng ganun? Actually, that's our problem today. Because a lot of people shared to you and said, you know, you have money already, you have this and that, you are talented. You only need Christ so that the uh, um, swerte ka. Diba? Para gumanda yung buhay mo. You need Jesus. We call that prosperity gospel. This is what the Bible says. Look at Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 to 29. Do you have a Bible here? I wanted to read it to you. I want to read it to you. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, verse 27 and to 29. Because this is not a this is not a, the verse um, that we can see in the in t-shirts, the in, um, in the lobbies. Uh, this is Philippians chapter, Philippians 1, 27 to 29. Only let your 
conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Christ, that, that whether I come and see you or else be absent, I may hear of you your affairs, that ye stand fast in one spirit, with one mind, striving together for the faith of the gospel, and in nothing terrified but your adversaries, which is of them, and even them token of perdition, but to, you, but to you of salvation and that of God. For unto you, let us read this, for unto you it is given on behalf of Christ not only to believe, but also to Masabi po ba sa inyo that you will suffering is part of your obedience to God? Suffering is part and parcel of our obedience to God. You say, where in the Bible, Pastor? Just look at the life of Jesus. You are a follower of Jesus? Then look at his life. Look at his disciples. They suffered for the gospel's sake, for Christ's sake. Ano sasabihin mo? Yung mga taga Dubai exempted? Are you exempted? So if you are suffering for Christ's sake, that's normal. Amen? Amen? If you are not suffering for Christ's sake, that's abnormal. Are you, ask your neighbor, are you normal? Are you going through tough times right now for Christ's sake? You know, for unto you it is, it is given in behalf of Christ not only to believe in Him, but also to suffer for His sake. Suffering is part and parcel of our obedience to the Lord. So, will we embrace suffering as the primary means for the spread of the gospel on earth? Amen? Mas mahina na, di ba? Siguraduhin ko mamaya ang gabi muna bago ako mo. Amen? You know what, brothers and sisters? If we are not ready to suffer for Christ's sake, we will never never reach out the people of this place. Kung matatakot ka, if you will be afraid, why? You will be afraid to share your your Jesus, right? Pastor, mawalan pa ako ng trabaho, Pastor. Timing na lang ako, basta pray, 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 pray na lang, basta. How will they hear without a preacher? How will I hear if you will not share to them? And I will not share to your, to your neighbor there, to your co-workers. God put you there. You're assigned to that mission. So you really need the power of God. Amen? With your own strength, tayo, ano tayo eh? Sigurista tayo. Tama ba? Mawalan pa ako ng trabaho, Pastor. Eh. Paano na lang yung ano ko? Pamilya ko. Pamilya, no? Pero ikaw talaga rin ang una talaga eh. Mama? So will we embrace, will we embrace suffering as primary means of the spread of the gospel? So mga kapatid sa Panginoon, malaking, malaking tanong po yan sa atin. Alam niyo po, I want to, I want to read the, uh, the letter of Adoniram Johnson. Adoniram Johnson, the first missionary of U.S. United States. Adoniram Johnson, his letter to the father of uh, his wife, uh, Anne. The name of um, the wife of Adoniram Johnson is, is Anne. And before they, they left the United States, he, he wrote a letter for the father. If you have a daughter, hear this letter. This is the letter of Adoniram Johnson to the father, father-in-law. I have now to ask whether you can consent to part with your daughter early next spring. To see her no more in this world, whether you can consent to her departure and her subjection to the hardship and suffering of missionary life, whether you can consent to her ex ex exposed to the dangers of the ocean, to the fatal influence of the southern climate of India, to every kind of want and distress, to degradation, insult, persecution, and perhaps a violent death? Can you consent to all this for the sake of him who left his heavenly home 
and died for her and for you, for the sake of the perishing immortal souls, for the sake of the glory of God, can you consent to all this in hope of soon meeting your daughter in the world of glory with a crown of righteousness brightened by the acclamation of praise which shall resound to her Savior from the heathen saved through her means from eternal woe and despair? Can you imagine a missionary writing that to you? Meron ano si Pastor Joseph, meron siyang may Zoe, ano? Madalaga na si Zoe. Tapos ganito yung matatanggap niyang ano, no? letter. Ako may dalag, may, may fourth year na rin, may, may third year na ako eh. Pag ganito yung sinulat sa akin, makasampal ko rin talaga eh. Pasampal mo na siguro pa. Itong ginawa niya po, ang ginawa ng tatay ni Adon Aram Johnson, sabi niya, hindi, bahala mag, bahala mag ano, mag-design si, si Ann. yung anak niya. At sabi naman ng asaw, ng ni Anne, sabi niya, yes, will obey the Lord. Can you imagine, you're taking care of your daughter, right? No, ayaw mong padapuan sa lamok, sa langaw, sa ipis, tapos dadapuan lang ng bakulaw, tapos dadalhin sa misyon. Ano ba? Ano? Will you give your life to the mission? Your, your sons, your daughters, will you give them to the Lord? Ay, naku, pastor. Yung anak ko, adik, sige, magpastor na lang yan. <laughs> diba? Tapos magre-reklamo kayo, hindi marunong mag-preach. Ay, pinadala niyo mga adik eh, may tama na. <laughs> ano ba? Ay, to, anak ko to, magaling to. Ano to? computer engineer to sayo computer sayo o abogado or uh, uh, doctor to talino to eh pero pastor ito mga anak ko wala nang pag-asa pastor pag mission mission ka na lang ha doon ka na tumira kay pastor <laughs> tapos yun magrereklamo kayo hindi magagaling yung pastor natin you want best pastors in the coming years train your sons and daughters for Jesus. Amen? You know, minsan-minsan nga iniisip ng iba, ano, yung iniisip ng iba yung yung wala nang kwenta yung anak. Di ba nag-a-addict? Addict-addict sa Dota, addict sa, <laughs> ano, addict sa, sa bato, di ba? Mga ganon. Tapos, pastor, 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 eh, ano yung hato? Eh, mission nyo siya. Talk to him, pastor. Ito namang mga pastor, ma, ma, utu-utu din. <laughs> Diba? Oh, to, 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 pag-pray natin, pag-pray natin. So, nag-ayos na. Nag-ayos na. Pag umayos yan, pag nag-ano yan, pag bumait yan, kaibigan niyo may mga, mga, mga mothers. Right? 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 Pero pag nasobrahan ng kausap kay pastor at nagsabing, Mama, magmimission na ako. Anak, ano ka ba naman? Nalisilaan ka na ba ng bait? <laughs> diba? Nung hindi mo pakinabangan, sa church, nung mapapakinabangan na, ayaw na. So mga kapatid sa Panginoon, I am praying that you will give your best for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Why? Because Jesus gave His life for you. Jesus gave His life for you. So the question is, will you embrace suffering as the primary means for the spread of the gospel on earth? Amen? Amen. Ah. Amen. Amen. Parang walang conviction, di ba? Ah. Amen. Parang patulog na o lasing na. Yung mga milik, ganun ninyo. Ganun yung kontek sa. Amen. 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 Suffering for Jesus sake. It will be an honor. You know, um, President Duterte was was talking to the wife of one of our soldiers in the Philippines and he said, you know, it's but a rare opportunity to die for your country. Dying for a country is a big privilege. Amen? Amen. Wow. So the, but can you imagine, you will be dying for your country and after the war, our public officials will just get the money? Tama ba? Kukulakutin lang naman nila yung pera eh. Di ba? Tama ba? Kukulakutin nila yung pera, kung ano nila, kung mga kayamanan ng ano, Pilipinas, 
Tapos ikaw naman doon, <laughs> mamantay ka, honor to die for country. Bigyan ka ng 100,000, okay ka na. Oh. Parang walang, walang sense, right? Walang, there's no sense to die for your country if, you're, if, you're, if your leaders are like that, right? But to die for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords is a privilege for us. Amen? Amen. Tanungin mo yung katabi mo, will you be the first martyr in this church? Come on! Come on! Come on! Come on! Sige, tanungin mo! You know? Probably, if, if there will be a martyr for Jesus, every service, your, your, your face will be here. Yeah, this is our first martyr. Just like, like Stephen, right? You remember Stephen in the Bible? Our first martyr. It's a privilege to die for Jesus, right? Who will be the first martyr of this church? Look at your neighbor. Ladies first. Men are too polite, right? They are too polite. Ladies first down. But you know, but you know, looking at life, looking at life, it, it, it is a great privilege to die for the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. If God will give you a chance to die for Him, He will sustain you. In going through that suffering. Last, last question this afternoon. Do I have uh, how many more minutes, Pastor? Over time na ako. Last, last. Total pawi na ako. Bakit na ako Is this mission? The last question. Is this mission unstoppable enough to die for? Let me ask you. Is this mission? Is our mission unstoppable enough to die for? Wow. So mga patid sa Panginoon, you look at the you look at the scripture, Satan, you know, in the life of Stephen, Satan afflicted the believers in that time, right? But can you see Satan wants to afflict the the, the, the people of the Lord. But because of that affliction, what happened? What happened? They were Scattered, and when they scattered, they continued sharing the the gospel. So look at that. We can see there that Satan's strategy to stop the church actually serves to advance the church. Amen. Yung pamamaraan ni Satanas para pigilan yung church. Yun yung paraan mismo na ginamit ng Panginoon. So that the gospel will be spread throughout that place. So brothers and sisters in the Lord, you know, sometimes there are problems that are coming in our way. But God is sovereign. He's in control of everything. God is in control. Nothing will happen in your life without His permission. Probably you're putting Him here. Probably you will be putting, he will be putting you in the Philippines, wherever. United States, Australia, God has his own purpose. That is to accomplish his mission through your life. Amen? Amen. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, nothing will stop our mission. Nothing will stop this mission. Amen? Amen? If you will not put yourself in this mission, this will push through without you. Without you. So brothers and sisters, actually, when you look at the scripture, God wants you to be in his mission, not because he needs you, but because he loves you. He wants you to experience his power in this mission. So, brothers and sisters, here is the mission of the Lord. God has His mission. You can say, I'm in, or I do not want in that mission. If you do not want in this mission, okay lang. <laughs> Walang mangyayari. It's not His loss. It's your loss not doing the mission of the Lord. Why? Because you will never, never experience the full power of God in your life when you are not in the mission of God. 
So here, four challenges. Number one, get involved personally and practically in the mission of the church. By the grace of God, be involved in the mission of this church. Amen? Amen. Parang mahina na. Amen? Amen. 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 Tingnan mo yung katabi mo, saan mo nakita kita, ha? tatandaan kita. Okay? Number two, repent of self-centered worship that never leads to proclamation of the gospel. Repent of self-centered worship that never leads to proclamation of the gospel. Number three, embrace suffering as a means of accomplishing the great commission in your life. Amen? Amen. You will say to yourself, Lord, even if I will suffer, I'll obey you. Even if I will suffer, I will obey you. And then lastly, die daily to yourself and to the world that you might gain Christ and make His glory known. Die daily to yourself and to this world that you might gain Christ and make His glory known. Amen? This afternoon, I'll close in the, this message, but let me appeal to the fathers. Fathers, God put you in a position to be the leader of your family. You will give an account to the Lord in what will be happening to your family. Diba sa Old Testament, merong priest, tapos merong mga fathers to lead our family. So I want to make uh, an appeal to you that I will give you an assignment. Fathers, you lead in the prayer in your church, uh, in, your, in your family. Sa umaga, sa gabi, o sa ano. Okay? Nasa sa mga, ama, mami, mga anak, dito na kayo magpipray tayo. Because that is our assignment. Amen? Amen. Para mas malakas yung mga babae, hindi kayo po. Yung, yung mga lalaki. Amen? Amen. Yun. Parang, amen? Amen. Yun. I'm, I'm asking you, I'm giving you an assignment. I asked Pastor Joseph um, one, one, one month from now. Kayo po yung mag-lead sa bahay. Di ba parang bago sa mga tatay, di ba? Kasi yung nanay yung inutusan natin. Yung mga nanay naman, wag niyo mo nang kontrahin. Yung iba sa ano, ah, mami, mag-pray na tayo. Pray, pray. Pray, pray, ganyan ka. Pray, pray. Wag niyo mo nang kontrahin. Okay ba yan? Hindi ka nga nagano, pray, pray. Wag mo. Minamalas tuloy tayo eh. Huwag mo na. Pagbigyan niyo mo na, pagsabi ni daddy, pray, mami, pray na tayo. Tsaka mga bata. Ano sasabihin ng, ng wife? Yes, dear. Ah, amen? Uh, yes, dear. Pray na tayo. Minsan, minsan, ano, alam niyo, lalo na sa discipleship, mga, mga, mga wife, side, side comment na to. Pag yung mga husband niyo magdi-discipleship, payagan niyo. Babait yan. Oo. Babait yan. Hindi ko na lang alam pag nasama sa ibang mga leaders na kalalakihan dito, napapasama daw eh. <laughs> no, 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 no. Alam nyo, we do discipleship, payagan nyo para bumait. At mga kapatid sa Panginoon, tayo mga tatay, tayo po yung naano, tayo po yung naatasan. And let me appeal to you. Alam nyo, pag nagkakasala ko ngayon, yung sa tatay, dalawang page eh. Ay, yung sa lalaki, dalawang page. Yung sa babae, ganun lang. Konti lang. Sa ko, submit ka lang, okay na. Yung sa mga tatay, mga kapatid sa Panginoon, by the grace of God, kasi ano sa, you know, Satan is doing his best to destroy, destroy families today. It's sad to say that almost 50%, even inside the church, separate ways. We are not exempted as a church. But what I'm emphasizing to our church today is that fathers, by the grace of God, let us love our wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for the church. You know, if we will do that, the Lord will bless us. And the Lord will bless his church. Can you imagine fathers loving wives as Christ loved the church? People around us will flock inside this church because there's a big difference. 
By the grace of God, I'm appealing to the fathers today. Love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for the church. Diba? Diba nung unang naliligaw ka, kahit ilang bundok, lalakbayin mo. Yung chocolate, kahit pinangutang mo, kagawin mo. Yung bulaklak, pinangutang mo, binibigay mo. Ngayon, kahit utot-utot na lang na flower, wala eh. Fathers, by the grace of God, let's... Alam nyo, minsan nakakainis din talaga, di ba? Alam nyo, yung, ito, ano, side comment na lang, may lang, sandali lang. Alam nyo, yung, si, nung pinarusahan si, ano, si Job, di ba, dapat yung parusa, malakas talaga, di ba? Nung pinarusahan si Job, anong unang namatay? Mga hayop niya. Yung hayop niya namatay. Pambira. Nung pangalawa, nawala yung mga anak niya. Yung pangatlo, ano? Yung health niya nawala. Yung pangapat, ano? Ang tinira sa kanya, asawa niyang buwangera. <laughs> Yun yung pinakamahirap, di ba? Huwag kang ano, oh, pagkakatabi mo yung asawa mo, baka ganyanin ka, relax lang. Yun yung pinakamahirap, tama ba? Yun yung worst. Baka, so, so, so. baka, baka mamaya yun yung ma ma ano, maalala sa, sa preaching. No, I'm praying to the Lord that mga kapatid, especially fathers, let us love our wives as Christ loved the church. Amen? Amen. And minsan, ano eh, minsan pride natin na, hindi, pastor, hindi siya sumusunod eh. Hindi. Mahalin natin siya. As Christ loved the church, susunod niya sa biyayan ng Panginoon. Hayaan mong yung Panginoon niya magpasubmit sa Kanya. And you know, we do that. We do that. The Lord will bless this church. The Lord will bless your family. You will enjoy your life on earth. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for your word this afternoon. Lord, just like uh, Stephen, Lord, I'm praying that we will be ready to suffer and even die for your name's sake. And it will be a glory for us to obey you and to die for you. Because you first love us, oh God. You gave your only begotten Son, Jesus, for us. And it is but an honor for us to suffer and die for you. Lord, I'm praying that you will bless your people here in Dubai. Lord, I'm praying that you will bless them above, beyond what they expect, O oh God. That they will see your power in their lives, O oh God. There is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.